Uh, wheel spacers. There's a lot of controversy surrounding them. Whether your wheel is rubbing on some suspension part, or you just want a wider track for performance, or simply for the looks, wheel spacers have been a go-to solution for many vehicle owners. And in fact, we've been using them ourselves and selling them for almost 20 years now. First though, let's start by saying, wherever possible, it's best not to use a spacer. That's because the best solution is always the simplest solution. In other words, if you can get a wheel that gives you the fit that you want, then that's always recommended. Any extra part, no matter how well built or engineered, is another potential failure point. So keep it simple if you can. We found that very often it's confusion with wheel widths and offsets that create the need for spacers when the desired fit isn't achieved. So a better understanding of these things can help you get the right wheels in the first place. And we're going to be covering that topic in depth in another video shortly. So please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when we do. But what if you already have wheels or getting the offset and the width you need or desire isn't really an option? Maybe after installing your wheels, you realize the inside of the wheel or the tire is just a little too close to the suspension or brakes, and it might even be rubbing occasionally, and it needs a bit more clearance to be safe. In this case, it may just require a few millimeters to get the job done. And that's where these slip-on spacers are often useful. They usually come in thicknesses ranging from 3 to 15 millimeters, and they just slide right over your studs onto the hub. Caution is required though with these because they will effectively shorten the amount of threads you have available on your studs or bolts for your nut to tighten onto. And this is important because the amount of thread engagement on the nut is crucial to a safe installation. Now without getting too technical, as a general rule, you need as much thread length as the stud is wide. So in other words, a 12mm stud, which is common on most Japanese import vehicles, would require at least 12mm of thread depth or travel for the nut to be safe. In our experience, for most vehicles, you can get away with up to around 5mm on a spacer for the stock studs to work safely. However, the best and only way to confirm this is to take measurements. Never install spacers on a vehicle if you don't have enough thread for the nut. You're just begging for trouble. But what if the spacer won't leave you with enough threads now that it's on? Well, you have a couple options. If you only need 2 or 3 more millimeters, then you could consider getting an extended thread lug nut that carries an additional shank that extends further down into the hole of the wheel. The other option is to change your wheel studs to extended studs. This is a more labor intensive job though since it requires removing each old stud and pressing in new ones, but is generally the safer foolproof option to guarantee you have enough threads to grab onto. When purchasing new studs, you need to make sure they're not just the right length, but they match the diameter and thread pitch of the original stud so that they work back with your nuts. And also that the neural base with the splines at the bottom is the correct size so it fits snugly into the back of your hub and doesn't spin when you tighten your nuts later on. Also if the studs are too long compared to the spacer, you may need longer nuts or open head nuts so the top doesn't bottom out on the nut before tightening properly. Sometimes though something a little thicker is required or maybe you want to widen the wheel track more than just a few millimeters. And that's usually where you'll find these bolt-on spacers to be the most useful. They're a chunk of billet aluminum that also comes in different thicknesses, usually from around 15 millimeters to 2 inches or more. They have a set of holes for the original hub bolts to use and essentially lower your offset and extend your hub by the equivalent amount. They can also sometimes work as conversion spacers and allow you to alter the hub spacing on your vehicle to accommodate a completely different wheel pattern in the factory. But one of the questions we're often asked is, are these really safe though? Well, over the years, we've sold hundreds of these in a variety of thicknesses and patterns and have had customers that use them for going off-road in trucks, some of them with 37-inch tires, autocross, track days, and even rallying. And the only rare issues we've encountered have always been related to improper installation, usually over-tightening them. Now, to appreciate why over-tightening or over-torquing can be so dangerous, not just for spacers, but even your original studs, we have to understand how these components work to keep your wheel safely on your vehicle. The friction of the wheel and the hub, or the spacer, contacting one another, and the force created from clamping them together, which is called clamp load, is what keeps everything from coming loose. So then, you might figure, well, the tighter the better, right? Not so much. That clamp load is achieved by tightening the lug nuts to a specific amount using a torque wrench. But there are some things that can really affect how much pressure you actually create on these two surfaces. For example, if you have rust on your stud or you lubricate it before you install, you can get a false reading on your torque wrench, which would then lead to incorrect clamp load. 
So that's why you always want to make sure your wheel studs are clean and dry when installing any wheels or spacers. An even more common problem though comes as we said from over torquing. No, 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 torquing. You worry your spacer might come loose so you tighten them as much as possible. But this does more harm than good. The reason is that the bowl or stud, like all metal, has a degree of what's called elastic deformation, which basically means that when you tighten your nut on the wheel, it pulls on the stud and in turn the stud resists trying to maintain its shape and pulls back, which is what helps keep a constant pressure or clamp load on the surface of the wheel and hub. So why is over torquing such a big issue? Well, because at a certain point, if the bowl is pulled and stretched too much, you pass the metal's ability to spring back and reach what is called the yield point, where the metal is now permanently deformed, or in this case, permanently stretched, effectively removing the bolt's ability to pull back on the wheel. This isn't something you can usually just tell from looking at it or even measure easily, and can sometimes plague vehicle owners for a very long time before they realize why they're having issues with nuts frequently coming loose for seemingly no reason, as they keep changing the nuts, but the problem is actually the studs. Most often, improper installation techniques are to blame with many garages or even owners using impact wrenches to install wheels and not regulating them to the specific torque setting, or sometimes using anti-seizing compounds or other lubricants on the threads before installation. While between 90 to 120 foot-pounds is usually a safe number to work with for most passenger vehicles, we usually recommend 110, these unregulated impact wrenches can often produce up to 500 foot-pounds of torque, five times the recommended amount. Another common issue that we've seen, especially in recent years, comes down to the quality of the product. Like most things now, the market is saturated with a wide range of brands of all sorts of prices from under $10 to over $150. And while we won't say specifically which one is the best, an obvious rule is you aren't going to get a good quality item if you're looking for the cheapest price. And given the potential dangers and cost of a space or failure, it's obviously not a smart move to cheap out on these types of parts. So you want to make sure they are CNC machined from Billet Aluminum. 6061-T6 grade aluminum is what we recommend for proper strength and the bolts should be genuine 10.9 grade bolts which you will usually find stamped on the head of the bolt. But again, be wary of fake markings, so purchase from a trusted source. Ultimately then, to answer the question of whether or not they are safe, the answer is yes, assuming you purchase spacers of a high quality and you install them correctly. Now, one more complaint you hear online is that wheel spacers are going to destroy your hub and bearings. Your vehicle is pretty much going to fall apart. Well, all a spacer really is, is an offset modifier or a hub extender. It ultimately does the same thing a wheel with a lower offset would do. And it is true that lower offsets do more than just simply push your wheels further out. A wider wheel track does increase the load your bearings will see, and it does increase your scrub radius, and it does affect your suspension stiffness. But that's a more technical discussion for another time. Having said all of that though, if you don't go overboard with your setup, you'll generally find these changes have a very minimal effect overall and usually go completely unnoticed. Now you'll see if you look carefully that some of these spacers have a small lip around the center hole or bore. These are what are called hub centric spacers. You may have heard that term before. What are they though? And are they really that important? Well, stay tuned for our next video where we're gonna discuss these questions and more. Please give us a like and subscribe for more content. We're a new channel and it really helps us out. Thanks for watching and until next time, drive safe.